Instagram and welcome to I Forgot How to Draw. So a few weeks ago, back in February, I got an email from Arteza. Well, technically I got an email from them in January and then I never saw it. So they had to like re-email me a month later. Um, when I finally saw their email, I was actually super excited because no one, especially a well-known brand has ever wanted to work with me before. So I don't know, I kind of felt like a real artist or something. Anyway, I'm a little mouth smack. Anyways, I emailed them back and we started talking and the person I was in contact with at Arteza was actually super nice and really understanding because I had to like keep putting off this video and stuff. Um, if you don't know what Arteza is, I'll have a link to their website below, but basically they brand themselves as an affordable and high quality art supplier. I've heard a lot about them and I've seen some other people's review videos about their products. When I was doing some research before agreeing to anything, I was actually really surprised to see on their website how many things they sell, like face paint and like knitting stuff, I think, which I don't know, I've only ever seen them advertise for fine art supplies. So I was surprised to see the wide variety of options that they had. Before we start, I just want to say that besides the supplies they sent me, I'm not getting anything from Arteza. There's no commission link, no money, nothing. Um, so that's just a quick disclaimer. So now let's get into the actual video so we can stop watching me struggle with this sketch. So the things they sent me were a 72 colored pencil pack at $31.98. Two 11 by 14 inch mixed media pencil pads at $25.99. 24 woodless watercolor pencils at $24.99. And a six pack of water brushes at $14.87. So when I was unpackaging, there wasn't anything obviously good or bad about any of the supplies that I could see. The paper pad was perforated, but when I tried to tear it out, I couldn't, and I had to like rip it the whole page out and then tear off the perforated edge separately. But I don't know, I was also sitting at a weird angle to get it in the shot, so maybe it wasn't really that hard and I'm just stupid. Uh, but the paper had one smooth side and one slightly grainy side. For the color pencils, first of all, I'm sure they were like really nicely organized in like a rainbow order or something, but I actually dropped them before I even got the chance to open them, so I guess I'll never know. Uh, overall, the pencils seemed really nice. They have light fastness marked on them with little pluses on the side, but I'm not going to talk about that because I don't know anything about that at all, so um, I'm not going to pretend to. If you're interested, you can Google it. I noticed that some of the silver details on the pencils had already chipped, so I kind of picked at it with my uh, finger and they flaked a little, but it wasn't really that bad. They don't look like super long lasting pencils in terms of appearance, but I don't think that's really important. It's more about the quality of the supply as an art supply, in my opinion. For the woodless watercolor pencils, I've heard people complaining about their packaging. At first, I didn't really get it until I was packing up all my stuff to go home after filming and realized I didn't have anything to do with them because I had thrown away the packaging. I feel like a set of pencils should have like a container that they come in, but whatever, not the end of the world. The brushes came with three broad tips and three fine tips and they're water brushes so you can put water in the barrel so you don't have to dip the brush over and over again. I have some of those blue ones that everyone has, but I actually like really hate them because I just I just don't get it. Like I don't get how you control the water flow and how you're supposed to like clean the tip between each color that you pick up and it stresses me out. Uh, but these ones were actually great in my opinion because they had these little buttons on the side that you pushed instead of squeezing the whole barrel. So for me, uh, I found it much easier to control the water flow. I tested all the supplies on both sides of the paper and overall decided that the supplies seemed to like sit better on the textured side. The smooth side seemed a little too smooth for how waxy the pencils were. It was kind of like they were just sliding around on the top of the paper. I got super excited about the color pencils at first because they were blending like really well and they seemed really soft, kind of like Prisma colors. The colors were really vibrant, which I actually found to be a downside for me personally when I started drawing because it seemed to be a lot of vibrant colors and no like naturally occurring colors if that makes sense. I managed to make it work and I think the coating on the pencils indicating the colors were generally like inaccurate and a lot of the colors were much more muted and calm than what the outside of the pencil suggests. The wooden watercolor pencils were like not great in my opinion. They really didn't do what I expected them to do. Some pencils worked really well, like the yellow, which got super vibrant and beautiful, but some just kind of got muddy and grainy when I added water. 
I also tried wetting the tip of the pencil and drawing with it, but the pigment just got even lighter and duller. I've used watercolor pencils before, and they always get stronger and more vibrant when you add water, no matter how you add it, so that was kind of disappointing for me. Um, I tried wetting the paper and drawing with the pencil on top, and again, it just got duller. I tried putting down a lot of pigment and then picking it up with the brush to paint with, but that didn't work. Um, I also noticed that if I drew really dark lines, or actually like not even dark lines, but if there were any lines at all that I had drawn, I couldn't get rid of them, no matter how many brush strokes and how much water I used. The only way I could actually get it to look like watercolors or create a nice flat color was to really softly block in a color with the pencil and then add water on top. Okay, so that's the first impressions. Um, let's get into the actual piece. I started with just ripping the paper down to the size I wanted because 11 by 14 inches is large. I added a washi tape border and I even like taped it to my clothes a bunch of times to get rid of the tackiness, if that makes sense. I don't know if you've ever done that, but you take like your tape, then you stick it to your clothes over and over again, and then it picks up all the fuzziness so it's not as sticky and it doesn't ruin your paper. I did that and then I, you know, taped it down to the desk. Um, I went in with my trusty erasable red pencil, which is just like a grading pencil that I get for like a dollar at Walmart. It's not a special pencil. It's literally just like a pencil with an eraser. I used that to make the initial sketch. Um, I actually filmed this while I was in the middle of raging art block, so I had a really, really hard time getting this sketch right and had to rework it over and over again. Still not happy with how it turned out. It's all wonky and messed up and like all like skewed to the left bottom corner. It's not a good... It's not, it's not a great sketch or a great final piece in my opinion, but it is what it is. I wanted to use all the supplies they send me, obviously, so I figured I would use the same method I normally do for my art when I'm working with marker, which is kind of like a loose base of color with the marker, or the watercolor in this case, and then add detail and shadow and lines and stuff with like colored pencil. So I started blocking in all the undertones and like obvious color with the watercolor pencils. I only did it a little bit because I didn't want it to get too muddy when I added water later. And I figured I'd do it like in layers and kind of build it up as it dried. The thing was I honestly hated using these watercolor pencils. I was really hoping that I'd change my mind about them and that they'd be great, but I just did not enjoy using them. Some of the colors like the yellow just overtook whatever it was near when the water was added, like on the cheek and the pinky finger. It was just bright yellow and that was not what I intended. Um, literally all the other colors were super light and washed out when I added water, like I may as well have not put them down at all. I just got really frustrated and decided I'd skip straight ahead to the colored pencil. So like I said before, I kind of got frustrated with the colored pencil color selection. I was almost afraid to start because I didn't see any safe colors to reach for when it came to the skin tones, and I actually really like using vibrant colors, so that's saying something. But when I tested them on scrap paper, I realized most of them were like normal colors with neon packaging for some reason. I waited for the paper to dry, but even when it was mostly dry, I found that the colored pencils did not want to stick to the paper. Speaking of the paper, actually, even though it's mixed media paper and I taped it down, it still got super warped, which is really annoying because I don't, I don't want it to do that, but it's fine, I guess. Um, back to the colored pencil. I think the colors were actually really pretty and I think you get a really good variety of colors, but the more I used them, the more frustrated I got. I could only do like three layers before I was basically just smudging what I already had down and light colors did absolutely nothing on top of dark colors, except maybe blend. Coming from using Prisma colors, I'm used to being able to layer lighter colors on top of darker colors when I need to to lighten them and stuff like that, but no. I also noticed that where I had used the watercolor, I could barely get pigment to stick at all no matter how much I pressed or layered. Like the left eye that's covered, I had to go back like 80 times because I just couldn't get it dark enough no matter what I did until I added the blue like way later. Like for some reason where the water was, the pencil just did not want to stick. So my overall impression of all the supplies that were sent to me is they're okay. Like nothing that I received really impressed me. The paper actually got so mangled by the washi tape, which I use all the time and even stuck to my clothes, which was really annoying. So, you know, the paper's not great. Um, so I wasn't really impressed, but I have to say that overall, I didn't hate anything either. I think I'm just used to using what I'm using, and what I normally use is kind of higher quality supplies in Arteza, which a lot of people have labeled as a school grade supply, or basically for people less experienced in art. 
And that's the thing. I don't want to discourage people from trying these supplies out just because I wasn't happy with them. If you're looking for something to really invest in and you want to step up from whatever you're using now, I don't know if I would suggest any of this stuff to you except like maybe the brushes. I liked them. I don't know. However, if you're a young artist or you're just starting your art journey or you don't have a lot of money to spend on really nice art supplies like me, I think Artisa is actually a really good option. When you're still learning, you really don't need to drop a fortune on art supplies. Because honestly, it's not the supplies that makes your art good. Like, yeah, your favorite artist online might use $100 paints and Copic markers and their art looks amazing, but it's not because of their supplies that their art is good. Their high quality supplies are just a tool that they know how to use. I really, really believe that you can make amazing art with whatever you have access to, like even crayons. Even though I have complained a lot about these supplies, which I still think are valid complaints, the biggest reason that I struggled was because this was my first time using any of these supplies. I also hated Prismacolors the first time I used them. Then I practiced with them for months, and I learned how to actually use them, and now I love using them. So even if these supplies aren't the highest quality, I don't think it matters because I promise that if you practice with them and really learn how to use them to the best of your ability, you can still make amazing stuff with them. So if you are looking for cheap art supplies or starting your art career, I honestly would suggest considering Arteza. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Check out my Instagram for information about a giveaway sponsored by Arteza. And you know, I don't know, go do art or take a nap or something. Bye guys.